What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay. This is the Monday Mastermind Call. Uh, let's start with a quick introduction. It's been a while to make sure everyone knows who everyone is. Why don't we start with Prince? Why don't you introduce yourself? And today's topic is storage. Sorry. Let's go into Prince. What's up, guys? My name is Prince Patel at Wired by Biz on social media. Um, what else do you guys want to know? Um, that's it for right now. We'll, we'll, we'll get into our storage, our storage ideas in a second. Laura? Hi, I'm Laura, also known as Thrifty Boss Babe. I'm in California with Chris. Awesome. Mary? Hey, I'm Mary, and um, also known as Feel Good Finds on Instagram. We lost it. Local. <laughs> I live close to Awesome. She's in, she's in California too, local. We lost her a little bit on the audio, but she lives nearby also. So a lot of great Cali gang here. And Mike, tell us a little bit about you. I'm Mike Olson underscore me on Instagram. And I run a, an account that processes electronics for the Blind Center of Nevada here in Las Vegas. So there's a lot about Las Vegas that I do understand and just trying to learn more and more about the eBay world and how to make things better. Awesome. So today we're going to get straight into it. We're going to talk about storage. I will briefly just go um, over just the night, give you guys an overview of what we should talk about. I am moving into, or I am just expanding into a 1200 square foot place and I will have the exact capacity to do 10,000 items. Now uh, Prince was just at my house helping me clean up and um, my photographer slash assistant um, and I totally crushed it today. Everything is almost set up. I have all the shelves I need. All the storage is doing or is done, and every single thing out of my house is gone. Prince, you're not even gonna believe it. There's not one piece of inventory in the house. Now it's entirely in the garage on shelves. So it is set up to process 500 items a week. So now I just need to do it. So I have the space. I have the production photo sets photography areas so I'm super stoked now there's no excuse um, other than the crush it so let's go next to Prince Prince how's your storage my storage is pretty good right now I just got back today I actually I got back yesterday night but I was so you know beat that I crashed really early so today I've been working on kind of just improving everything this is a bunch of returns which I'll talk about later but uh, so this is basically my storage situation I have all my cameras and stuff here uh, yes, yeah, rather small because you know my units are small, so works out. You're muted, by the way. Is all that in front of you inventory? Yes. Wow, beautiful, beautiful site. Uh, let's go to Laura. Laura, talk to us a little bit about your storage. Um, obviously, I keep my storage in bins, um, but I also have a whole other side of the garage that um, I keep like hard goods and shoes and things of that nature. Um, I am going to be breaking big time into hard goods. I have a new venture coming up that I'm really excited about. Mm. Um, that kind of presented itself to me, um, this past week. So I'm going to be saving either for a warehouse or a very, very big shed, like a ginormous shed. Awesome. I'm excited. If you do an eBay barn, the concept, I just love the idea of uh, something being separate. Is it cold in your garage? Um, yeah, it is a little cold and I, um, if I am, I don't know if I'm going to stay in my garage now because this opportunity presented itself, I'm really going to need storage space, like probably more than my garage. So, um, I might just break, like not even invest in my garage into climate control and just kind of break straight into a warehouse, but we'll see. Awesome. And Mary, talk to us about your storage area. Well, congrats for your, um, addition. That's kind of big. Um, how I started was um, with this small unit here. I didn't know it was going to expand so fast. Uh, this, uh, each box, each storage box from here takes up um, only 10 items. And I thought I wanted to look cute. I wanted to look uh, fitting into my office, but I soon realized that it's not about cute. It's about expanding and uh, making it as efficient as possible. And then soon after that, I expanded into these other crates um, into a uh, higher, bigger, wider rack, and these hold uh, up to 30 each crate, and they have expanded. I just simplified my entire inventory system just because as I grow, I can see the difference of uh, capacity per box and the need for um, utilizing every space possible. So 
Uh, that's what I'm working with now and I'm hoping to expand um, little by little. It's, it's no rush for me, but I can see how uh, it's super important to start with storage. Awesome. Well, let's go to Sam. Sam, um, our topic today is storage. So we're going to talk a little bit how our facilities are set up and just give us an, an overview of, um, well, first of all, your Instagram name and then give us an overview of what your, your storage looks like. Uh, can you guys hear me? I'm in public, so I'm not going to be able to talk for a long time. No worries. Uh, so for I have two uh, storage places, one for electronics and the other for closing and different you know categories stuff. One of the reasons that being when we first started, we we're just doing electronics and uh, we were having like the warehouse is kind of dusty because we do recycling and stuff in there. So, so we have to figure out a way to keep everything clean. So we decided to put it all the clothes because some were new with tag, you know, stuff like that. So, and they were getting dirty. So we have to figure out a way to just do everything separately. So pretty much in, like in the middle of like uh, summer last year, we moved all of our inventories to a separate location. Now, we pretty much run the closing and everything from there. And uh, we have a listing station now fully set up. And uh, yeah, and today we, I was actually training one of the new employees there. So we, everything is pretty, pretty good now. Yeah. Laura, go ahead. Sam, so I was having the same problem having my clothing in the garage. And I forgot to tell when it was my turn. Um, I'm starting a new inventory system just for my clothes. So when I do measurements, I bag and tag. Um, but I got this awesome new sealer and it seals all my bags. So, and I've also been putting my business card in there as well. Wow. Then, yeah. So when I measure, I stick it in the bag, I put it with my business card and I seal it and it's all ready to go. Um, and it keeps everything safe from the elements as well. Is there a measurement on that business card? No, there's no measurements on the business card. I write it down separately. I have a okay. notebook to list with so that way I can take it anywhere when I list um, and I write my measurements in the notebook okay um, so that way you know I, I don't have to be near my inventory in order to list which is great beautiful um, Mike I saved you for last because you guys are moving into a new facility so maybe you can speak a little bit more about your storage situation maybe before and after sure uh, currently like you might see a, a Costco type of metal rack uh, about six feet wide six and a half feet wide two feet deep and six feet tall and there are four shelves so currently what we have is a just a basic excel type of uh, custom skew organization system we print out a little label and we put it on our item that works okay but one of the things that we are adding and just to mention our new shipping system that will it's a foam packaging system one of the things that we've realized is that you are wasting money if you ship air or if you store air. And so one of the things that we're trying to do, because a lot of our items are hard goods and multiple different shapes, is trying to find a system that organizes all of our items in a way that the small items are stacked together in blue bins, the shelves are organized so that a particular size of bin gets put on one shelf, and if that item fits in it, when our, one of our three listers lists an item, he puts it in the appropriately sized bin, and those bins are all kept in unison on the same shelf. If it's a little bit larger, it goes to the next size up of a bin, and those are all stacked, only three levels deep. And so we maximize, if we've got small items, there's gonna be multiple items on a shelf um, and multiple shelves, whereas the larger items will obviously increase the size of our bins we'll still keep them three high but that will obviously reduce the size of our shelves so we're having to make our size of our items dictate the space on our shelves rather than the other way around and so um, yeah check with me in about two weeks I'll let you know how that's working but I'll I'll have pictures and videos of where we've come from and where we're going to and see see what works awesome Mike, can I ask a question? Yeah. sure is that Laura yeah do you have a separate inventory manager, like, or do you have multiple people that pull your items to ship? We only have one person that pulls the item to ship. Um, we are also implementing a new inventory management system that is going to be a few hundred dollars a month, and it's specifically designed around the recycling industry so that we can track, for example, a computer all the way 
through from bringing it in the door to selling it or bringing it in the door and separating it. So our inventory management system is going to synchronize our eBay store with what we're going to have on Amazon and our uh, natural uh, e-commerce platforms. It will sync all of those items, but we do only have one person that is currently pulling an item when it sells. And that person is also responsible when they have the custom SKU, they add to that custom SKU that gives the specific rack and shelf location of the item. So he knows where to go back and pull it. But it's key to remember in case he gets hit by a truck, is that system still easily understandable by anyone new that walks in? So that's one of the things that we try to do is all of our systems are run off of the, if I get hit by a truck, can someone step into my place, whether I'm a lister, whether I'm a manager, whether, whether I'm an inventory. So I think to answer your question more, we are going to start inventorying our items much sooner in the process. And mm. so it might be some of our sorters that are starting to inventory items. It doesn't mean that that item that gets inventoried early makes it all the way through to e-commerce. It might get divided up and separated and chopped up into parts early, but at least the good ones that we end up selling through our e-commerce platforms will have been identified early and they just move through our inventory system that also correlates to our accounting. Yeah, that's awesome. Because the reason why I asked is over the weekend, I met a seller that's actually an electronic seller. Um, and I talked to his inventory manager and they were having a problem with multiple it's people pulling product and then losing and then the inventory manager losing product. Um, so he, the inventory manager actually decided to do a sign out sheet um, per area of their inventory so that if multiple people are pulling product, they can sign out the item and then the inventory manager knows that, oh, this person had already taken care of it because they were they had like item SKUs and, and a management system for their items, but they were having problems with multiple people pulling different things. So he decided to yeah. do a sign out. And I thought that was really smart. Yeah, this is similar. We will have a different system that says this small group is in charge of this item. And then once they go ahead and do their particular activity, they say, okay, this is going to our demanufacturing or our destruction process, or that item is moving on to the eBay e-commerce department. So now we have kind of a few people that are in charge of a small area, but every time that they log onto this system or every time that they put an item away or pull it, it automatically tells the system who pulled that item or who put it away. So similar to what you're talking about. A couple of things that come to mind for me that are really cool is one, I didn't consider the fact that you pay for the space of air. So air is very expensive. Having no air is good. You want to reduce all that extra space if you can. Also, vertical space is something a lot of people don't necessarily consider. And right now, I have 1,200 square foot in my garage, but when I switch to a warehouse, there's a lot less obstructions. So it'll be, it's even more space, but sort of the same square footage. And then the other one, the truck system, I think that if you have that mentality when you just begin, then you understand, right. okay, you know, the system needs to be foolproof. Like the, the concept of um, Starbucks wanting an employee within two weeks to have the skills required to be a manager, that's, in, that's insane that their training is designed like that um, to help people go through the whole learn everything in a pod. Right. Well, and also our, our people work for a nonprofit and so the pay isn't going to be incredibly high. So we don't want the stress to be any more than it has to either. Um, I did a small reward for our listers and I got this idea. I said, okay, you guys reached a certain level. We've doubled our revenues in the last six months. And I said, if you guys reach this, I'll, I'll buy each one of you a set of uh, beats headset. And uh, they were all excited. Inside, I was more selfish because I said to myself, I'm sick of listening to Megadeth. I'm sick of listening to Trap uh, Rep. I'm, I'm the older guy. that Nobody wants to listen to my country. So it kind of, it kind of worked out. It's good. It's a win-win. <laughs> That's so funny, Trap music. That's the only thing I listen to when I'm listening or working. So um, yeah. does anybody else have any feedback on this, Prince? As far as the music or, or the storage system? Both. <laughs> music and storage. The music is awesome. 
I think I think it's funny that you're buying them all beat like the headphones or the other pill. Yeah. The wire. <laughs> wire. Oh. The wireless okay. headphones, yeah. Okay, gotcha. That's yeah. dope. They can, but, do, um, they can do what they want go wild. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. So like I had a question about that actually. So I still don't really know the whole like the whole nonprofit thing that you have over there. So you're working for a company and you're running their eBay account there. Um, Correct. So what does a nonprofit mean as far as a nonprofit organization? in eBay? It's a great question. And I think most people should understand. I may have mentioned this before. Nonprofit is not an, an income statement. Nonprofit is a tax status. Okay. And so just because we're a nonprofit, we get certain tax limitations. Also, Here's a little hint. We pay government rates when it comes to shipping. So to send a 10 pound item to New York from Las Vegas is about 10 bucks. Wow. And that's not going to be found for, with very many places. So if you have the ability to have a nonprofit status, now, yes, it takes a lot of work to get to that stage. And our nonprofit is 60 years old and only about 10 years in, in the eBay environment. But there's lots of things that you can do, not to mention, um, we have our new facility has a full blown uh, culinary kitchen that blind members of the valley are going to be taught how to cook for work. So there's a lot of good programs, which is not just a feel good, but it actually is a, a good thing. So that's a, an, an arrow in our quiver that most people don't have access to. But it's just a, it's just a, a, a tax status. That, that's really all it means. Plus, all the all of the people rather than the money being invested into the business that's not allowed they ha you can't take you can't take profits and pay the shareholders our our shareholders or our board members the board members actually don't get paid they're already independently wealthy as it is and they just want to see the system grow and more people being helped and so the profits that are made actually get split amongst the employees of our, we have about 40 site, site employees and about 15 employees that are blind that, that work oh, in our, wow. our system. Wow, that is really, really cool. I think I'll be going to eBay Open this year, so I might swing by uh, the warehouse, check it out. Yeah, definitely, you, you need to. We actually, if you wanted to, Chris, if you wanted to establish a second outside, we have a one of our venues, that you're going to be able to release and do uh an event or a convention um we have weddings quinceaneras and and different things like that that are going to be planned so wow. we have plenty of, plenty of space we're going to be renting the biggest mansion we can so after that we'll do the after party at the at that event center sounds exciting because it's just like i feel like there's a huge audience of people that haven't really been getting together but i'm excited to uh to do a Las Vegas meetup, especially because you guys are so close to Zappos and Amazon. I would love for them yep. to come. They would probably sponsor a local entrepreneur event of um, e-commerce sellers just so they can get some ideas. So that might be fun no, to put they together. Absolutely would. Mm -hmm. they, they already uh, give us a lot of their used equipment. Um, so they've been a big donator uh, to our system, you know, from the beginning. So um, Zappos, I don't think, I, I know the people to call and and the things to do so that's definitely a potential for it. i'd love to help you hook that up exciting i think it's so cool for people who are um residential sellers to just be able to look at a commercial ebay facility because it's not something that's that common honestly when you think ebay store you think somebody's garage and all over their house well, at least i do right I have, Sam, I have a question. go ahead um, so you know how a lot of thrift stores are set up as charity shops. I was wondering how, if anybody knew the answer to this question, if any eBay sellers based on their charity donations have set themselves up as a charity based on their tax status. There's one local here, um, that has around eight employees and they have a board that determines like how much money they get paid as the directors and the rest of the money goes, I think it's split amongst the employees the same way. It's a, like the, right. they set them, they wanted to run it as the people, the main people, and then a board assigns their salaries and such. And um, I've also, there's a, I think Mary, you know, there's, a, there's somebody on Instagram that has two thrift stores, isn't there? Um, I do. The, he actually lives in Texas. He was in the retail event that we, uh, that Laura got together. Um, he flew out and we were talking, he, he said that his, 
two uh, thrift stores are in the small little town in Texas, but they are kitty corner within the same street. And I asked him, what's, what's the purpose of that? He said, um, surprisingly, people shop, people that don't shop on this one shop on this one. So I have two different um, niches type of stores. So it's a little bit more furniture on that one, more clothing on this one. And uh, he takes donations all the time. So, and then he also sells on eBay. So he, he has that background from um, brick and mortar and then an actual um, e-commerce site. That's kind of interesting. I guess my question is, I was wondering if you have to have a brick and mortar in order to set up and under this tax. Uh, That's a good point. I think so. I'm not sure. Maybe I can ask him for you. We can Probably because it has to do with the state, I bet. Yeah, you have to be registered That's differently. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask Sam. Sam, is your um, you, are you guys involved with with five hundred one three C nonprofit at all? No, we're not. Okay, so you're just for profit. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Mike? I know you you're a you're a big electronic seller as well. Uh, so one thing that I have a question is that uh, how do you deal like for example like when you bring in stuff from from the, like from the truck, you know things go in different ways. So. Like, how do you keep the inventory? Like, because like, once everything everything comes in, you have to go in there and pick pick a stuff that you want to put on eBay, right? So like, how do you how can Correct. you manage that? How do you manage that? After they pick up the item, they have. Yeah. Are you asking about sorting? Yeah, sorting. How do you okay. manage? Yeah. We have um, currently three sorters, and so they might be sorting anything from, like for example. The old, if you've ever seen Fremont Street, the Fremont Street experience with a big, huge tube of lights, we received from them the entire set of speakers. And they're about the size of a Fiat, each one of them. And so those stay out in the yard. But we get um, kind of like laundry bins. When we pick up the items, we put them in laundry bins or they're on pallets. Sometimes we might get an entire pallet of Cisco items that haven't even been opened from the box. And when they come in, it's kind of my job to help the sorters understand, oh, hey, this is, this is going to be valuable or, you know, we already have too much of this or these are. So it's kind of my job to instruct them. For example, I know that we are throwing away about $30,000 a month worth of chargers because they've just never known what to do with them. So we're going to be implementing that program as well. You have to have it obviously organized because there's all kinds of dirt and mess all the way from brand new in the box. And so having an organized method to say, okay, you guys don't worry, you're, you're busy sorting, put everything here, that moves down the chain to an additional person that we're gonna be hiring. And they're gonna be, we wanna become the mafia of cords and chargers. There's, there's no reason, we, if you understand what a Gaylord is, and many of you probably do, it's four feet wide, four feet long, and four feet tall. We throw away three of those full of chargers every day every single day some of them are 18 to 20 dollars a piece and so it's just taking a different mindset to say where can we continually extract value so it does take someone at management level teaching the process of this is how we handle it and this is what we sort this is what we look for and then you just constantly have to keep up on it i don't know if you have done this before but what we do with that kind of stuff is that we put them in a lot for example we sell just cords like 100 cords for like uh you know, like for $65, $65 shipping to $75. So just put bundle them together. And it's a, it's a lot easier to have it stored if you have, if you have them together. So right. try that. Yeah. I think we will. That's, that's a great idea. We, we all are, I'm, a, I'm assuming that by the time we become extreme professionals in that, it will be very easy to identify this type of cord is going to be great in a lot. Looking at the market and then saying, wait, these brand new Dell chargers are great by themselves. We'll just let the market dictate what that is and uh, try to keep our finger on the pulse of the market. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to Holly. Holly, thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. Um, we are today are just talking about what our storage areas look like. So I'm going to unmute you. But um, I know you also do eBay and Amazon. Does, can you talk to us a little bit about what your storage area looks like? I can. Um, and is the background noise coming through? Yes, but it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Um, yeah, so I actually had Mary mention to me earlier uh, last year that 
Um, inventory should be organized in a way that anyone can jump in and take your place. So everything is organized in a separate building um, for eBay in bins um, with numbers and racks. So my storage number on the item may be one being the rack, A being the bin. And I, and I tried to do individual numbers per piece thinking, well, I'll just file things and then I'll know exactly where it is. And to me, that was too much extra work. Um, so anyways, I just go with the rack and the letter Amazon. Actually, the goal is always to not store it and we don't cross content we don't cross our um, inventory so Amazon comes into the garage area that you know fulfilled by everyone just completed and it goes in and out in the same day do you have a rule that it's like 24 hours from when it arrives you know what? I don't but he does okay because I think that's a good way to process as far as like determining how long you want to get an FBA shipment and time is money with eBay as well. One thing I wonder with, with sorting is where do you sort? Like I get it. You should sort similar things together. For example, four of the similar item, but how do those piles set up? So like for me, I'm trying to use different shelves when I'm doing sorting. So I'm trying to decide first I'm going to sort by size. Then I'll sort like after that part, but it's also very space consuming to do sorting versus some items you know are ready to go as soon as they come in those items are easy to process the ones that are building up to a lot i know a lot of people booksellers are building volumes and sets and i don't know how they would even manage you know one incomplete and wait for it for a week where does it go while it's being stored yeah. does anybody how many have square feet did you say you're getting into chris i have 1200 square feet now is are you taking up as much space as you possibly can with racks or do you have some open space i have about a hundred or 100 to 200 feet of open space right now that i don't have anything in that area so that would be a good place to sort if but i'm not sure how i would set that up maybe bins maybe shelves um but i have racks go ahead go ahead sam so uh, what I've been doing with the closing is that whenever, like after we sort everything out, we have them in bins. So whenever they're listing, they can just take the bin and list through it. They're done. So they, when they go to the next one, it might be the same, might not be the same. So we just sort them out and put, put them in, in the bin. So after they did list, they just transfer that to a different bin. Pack everything ready. They, they transfer that to another one. So you might, tr you can try to do that. Maybe it might be helpful. I don't know. So, so I'll give you an example. Um, Prince and I, Prince was just here. We went to a plus size clothing store and I said, I want to make some Christmas bundles now. And when we walked in, they're like, you guys aren't plus size. How? Cause they only carry between two X and eight X at the store that we went to. And then we told them we were resellers and they're like, okay. And then we said, what, what is a proper um, bundle? Is it, shirt, pants, tie, how, what do we do? And they said, no, that's ne we've never sold sets like that. It's always three pairs of pants or three shirts or three ties. That's how guys buy stuff. They come in and they take care of one category. So that made me wonder, okay, if I'm going to put bundles together and I only have two extra large shirts and I'm waiting for a third to make a nice bundle, where does it live in my area? You know, I get that because I, you only pay one shipping cost. So it sounds fantastic to me to do it because it's also making me consider Poshmark because people can can bundle items together for clothing and it's very exciting to me so But it also was very enlightening talking to people who do that for a living and trying to see what what bundles are created and for them What they do is the popular bundles that are created there. They actually private label and sell on Amazon So it's very smart. They use their brick and mortar to determine what sells on Amazon. So if you know two belts sell that are different colors, that's now a new bundle for Amazon. So um, it's crazy because their store is so small, but they're mainly an Amazon seller. It's just testing the market with a local mom and pop because there's, there's nobody in their store when we went there. Um, I also found out 3X and 4X are the, most, are the best bang per buck. More than 4X is less common, but also has an average sale price of 80 bucks. So that's insane. Above five, five X and above is ex quite expensive, even for a regular article of clothing, but again, less common. So storage is interesting for that. Also storing extra large clothing is different than 
let's say women's lingerie. It's like uh, a one one hundredth of the material. So it is interesting looking at the different different articles. And I like athletic leisure clothing, and it's which is also usually the material that's really scrunchy and small. Um, and for those, sometimes they get lost in the bin because they're so small. So. Uh, yeah, they slide up. They're really small and they can uh, fold easily too. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, since we're talking about storage, you know, I don't know if you guys know Brian on Instagram. Uh, he had like pretty much something similar to Amazon. So I'm planning on doing that. Something similar to that, hopefully in the future. It's like a way of, you know, you know, Amazon, they're one of the best when it comes to inventory systems. So why not try to create something similar to that? So you can, you don't have to do everything manually. So like try to use barcodes. So that's what I'm going to try to focus on next after I'm done with what we have here. Not here, but I'm talking about in the future. Yeah. Right. No, that's a, that's a good idea, Sam, because especially when you become space constrained, I actually met with Amazon Friday. They flew in and were part of CES. And one of the things that, that we're going to be doing with them, we're still space constrained as well. We might process a few thousand computers a month, but we have been selling them, I think, at undermarket to some wholesalers because we knew we did not have the space to store it. So I took the idea to our 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 business people and said, let us process those all the way through, get them pre-shipped and ready for shipping, and we'll get them out of our, our warehouse and just store them FBA so that Amazon can ship them. And they kind of said, what's FBA? And I went, okay, thank you. Good. We'll do it. Awesome. Any other thoughts, guys, on storage? Um, after I've converted to the bag system, I've used a folding board like they do at retail shops, and it's really helped me streamline the way that my packages fit in each bin. Um, and then also the sealing system with the bags, um, I can suck all the air out of the bag. Oh, no it. storing air. Very good. No storing air, and everything lays flat. It's all the same size because I fold it with a folding board. And I can literally just flip through each one of them with the numbers on the outside to see. So I don't have a problem with, yeah, like things small falling to the bottom of the bin or looking for a certain colored shirt. Like I don't have any of those problems anymore. It's really helped me streamline. I love the, the lack of air. So maybe we can each now talk about one improvement we would like to make in our storage area. Um, and I will... I'll start because there's been two people now that have completed my 10,000 item thing using my own storage system. And one of the people that completed it is 16 years old. So um, looking at his system, he basically copied me exactly, but made two major improvements. Um, one is because he uses the Amazon system like me where it doesn't matter if they're like it or they don't have to be the same type of item in each bin. So shoes and um, a bra and a jacket could be in the same bin. But because of that, it can create uneven, so there may be overflow. So he has an overflow area for that specific row built in, and on that bin is written what items there are. And he also puts a tag on the other corresponding item, uh, on the other corresponding bin to let it know, okay, this is overflow. So it's basically the same system that I have, but on the front of all the bins it says the overflow, and it just allows it, again, to have no air anywhere. And it's also not, he keeps some relatively, he keeps some air in there because if they're too tight, then you waste time trying to sort to get the right item out. You have to have a certain amount of air to make it fast. So I thought that was really cool. Having the overflow bin, I will be adding that ASAP. Let's go with uh, Mike. Do you have an improvement that you would want to add after listening to this call or just in general? I think that as far as to add to it, I like the inventory management system. I'm not so concerned about now understanding what the item is, is understanding the number and where it is. Mm. And then our, uh, the size of the item is going to be determined in our listing. And then that, that grouping size of items are going to be kept in the same place. It's a little different. Uh, in my system because we don't have anything foldable or crushable or the ability to compact the space. It is what it is. You're not going to, you know, take a, an HP printer cartridge and squash it down. It's got to stay the same size, but it can fit in an exact size bin so that the next time you find another item doesn't have to be the same size printer cartridge. 
It just has to be the same size of an item that will be stored with it. So I, I'm curious to know, Chris, when you said the your shoes are stored with other items, what dictates which bin an item gets stored in? What's available. So they just all stay, I have a clip that goes onto the item. And when it's sold, there's only 20 clips per bin. And when it gets sold, it gets recycled to the pin gets put on into a different, a different item. Oh, and then if okay. the bin is full, then it goes into the overflow bin, which was very clever that that kid did that. So it um, allows all of your bins to always be full. Kids are smart. Kids are smart. So, and he also enlisted his football team to like go on a listing spree and get him up, the, which is insane to me that he was like, hey, there's all this free labor. Because um, he got the idea because NCAA athletes are not paid. So he's like, high school athletes aren't paid either. Why don't we go ahead and just make it work? I'm like, that is insane that you recognize that as a kid, but free labor. Um, let's go to uh, Mary. Do you want to go next? Um, yeah, just a little thing you, t you touched on uh, where you want to go vertically. I have this big one, uh, this big storage system here. And it's pretty high up. I've stacked up. Um, I don't want, you know, those boxes to follow over my head. I've, I've stacked up uh, little boxes that I know I can bring down like uh, much easier. But as far as this one here, I think I do need to consider um, increasing the shelving. So maybe considering going vertically more as well as um, reducing um, air in, in the bags. I don't necessarily do it every time. I've purchased where um, they don't have this, uh, the tabs, the sticker to feel. So I've used the, the eBay um, logo sticker. So um, maybe considering making all of them from now on. So they have the little sticker so that I could remove any air that's on there. Um, and uh, talking about what you were saying with this, uh, this kid who had this genius idea to do the overflow, what I'm doing now for shoes is I have the hanger racks, the closet racks where you put shoes. That's where I have my shoes. And um, I have a bin for like your system, uh, Chris, I have the bin with my numbers and the clips with the shoes and then a number and the clips for clothes. So if I do have the shoes to be hung, if I, if it's a, a pair of of shoes they go there if it's clothing it would go on the bin so i understand that the concept for the overflow but um that could be another option too if you know you have certain type of items that are wire and then certain types of um, items that are hardware or hard like a similar like item and create two bins of two different clips and you don't have to go back and forth but I, I have an only shoe rack as well, but the thing I do like about the bins, if I had more space, it'd be even better, is when I go to a bin that has five jackets, two pairs of shoes, and, and whatever, it's easy to identify one of the two shoes. There's only two shoes in there versus an area like that. I have racks of 80 shoes, and especially if you're selling eight or nine of the same exact shoe, it would be, it would right. be easy for an employee or staff member to ship the wrong one but not easy if it's only one. And that's why I think Amazon purposely does it so it's harder to pick the wrong package. I don't know. That's a good, that's a good point. I didn't think of um, same items with different sizes. Especially with replenishables. Go ahead, Mike. I know a, uh, I'm fairly close friends with a, um, he's out of Boise, Idaho, and he does a lot of um, remote controls. And so he has a bin system and he assigns the bins, but he never puts a similar uh, remote control in the same bin. So mm. it's a little, a little bit easier for him to identify or his person to identify. He also uses remote listers as well, but he never puts the, the remote control that two of them are similar in the same bin. So it's fairly easy to identify when they're not alike. Like sounds like what you're doing. I want to give one more idea, which is common, which is building in redundancies. Some people um, in the custom SKU have where the item is stored. They also have it in their description and they also have it in the picture and they also have it in the title, right? So they're just really trying to avoid losing the item when they have that many redundancies built in and it doesn't take a lot of extra time. But again, if you have the wrong inventory number on it, you can potentially never find the item. So it's a little scary, um, but you'll see different methods that people do to try to add in duplication at least one time. 
Yeah. We do that with our, what they call a service tag. Each computer comes with a service tag and we do include that. We're starting to include that more in not just our title because we've gotten our titles down just right. But like you said, including it somewhere else, because a lot of times when they look so similar, but they might have a, a RAM slight difference or a hard drive slight difference mm -hmm. or even a slight difference in the processor. It needs to be very clear which one your um, shipping person is pulling. And, or even a slight difference in condition in identical items. So now, now you're really like, yeah. it's really easy to mix up. Yep. Cool. So how about you, Sam? Did you... Uh, so I'm going with a different approach when it comes to having uh, clothing and shoes in one bin because like I really want things to, as soon as they're sold, I want them to get pulled out, put a sticker and shipped out. So pretty much we're packing the shoes and everything. Like I want everything packed before. And it's a lot easier when you have them in a shelf and you can just put the boxes in there and just stack them up. So we have a shelf just for shoes that's been pre-packed. Uh, so I'm going with that method. Right now, I'm not pulling the oldest stuff out of the bin because I want I want that to correct itself. So I'm not doing any of that. And the thing is, it's a lot faster for me to like. I'm not trying to find the shoes or trying to rebox. Like if it's something big, I, I don't have to try to you know fix fit fit in everything. I can do it while I'm listening. After the end of the listing, I can just create a box, put a box, put everything in there, and done. Uh, and one thing that I've been doing is like every month I've been doing inventory check. So if there's if in one of the bin, if there is like a, if if this item has been sold in a long time, what I do is like I just I have a formula. It's like three large means uh, no one large means three medium, and one large means nine small. What that means is like a, it's a way for me to uh, so whenever there's a listing going on, I can tell them hey put it on this SQ. That means it's like in this is cute, you know, you can put this size amount in there. So it's a lot more efficient. It's a bit complicated, but it's been working pretty well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, does anybody else have any closing thoughts on storage? It's been an extremely informative call. Um, I've made a couple no. of no. Laura, I'm having a problem. I'm having a problem deciding whether I should... Um, until the meantime, until I get a warehouse um, for the upcoming projects I have, if I should get a shed and do like have an office in there and where I should take my pictures in there, like it's going to be a pretty big shed or, and just have all my inventory stored in the garage or have like a separate hard goods um, shed and then just do clothing and shoes and my office in the garage. Any thoughts on that? I am so excited that everything's going to be done in one area for the mixed, but I can see that um, I will need actually four different photo setups to do all the different types of things that I'm doing, but the listing area is the same, but the photo area is different. So um, ideally you're not doing it in two separate areas. I think because if um, you time of moving things from one area to the other, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Anytime you can reduce steps and reduce clicks, it makes you money. If so, you can, uh, if, you're, if your space allows you. Uh, can you have a system where you don't have to move that much? Just have a way to list different items and just like have a designated area area just for listing. And instead of having different station, if you just have one station set up, you can save a lot of space and you can find a way, like you don't have to move a lot as well yeah if that's you what can, I was thinking about yeah. like having a separate shed where I could literally like have an office have everything set up right there because my whole system when I from start to finish I do um have like I do a bin system so I literally take pictures of a bin and then a bin and then a bin and then a bin I don't do like you Chris where I, I have numbers I just go by bins and then I'll just if, if it starts to get lower I'll just flip everything to a new bin pull that bin and refill it so for me, um, I don't need to just have numbers and, and do it that way. I pull a whole bin out and do it that way. So I really do like lug around bins quite a bit, um, but it's just easier for me that way. And as far as like inventory, like you guys were saying about having multiple tags too, when I write my measurements down, I'm also doing it by the bin. So at the top of the page, I have the bin letter or, or number 
and I'm literally numbering each item. And then when I go back to list, I'm plugging that item into my item um, description or into the um, custom SKU based on what I've already written down in my notebook for the measurements. And then I'll go back in my inventory system on my computer and plug it into while I'm listing. So that's also my way of doing it too. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm kind of worried about if I have separate areas for my hard goods away from my clothing and all that kind of stuff, it's going to get more difficult for me to lug things around. So. I mean, there's the idea of, um, I mean, if you go Kaizen, like manufacturing and production and shipping, they try to keep everything in like a U shape. So literally the person is not even moving. Like they get one area, like if in a perfect Kaizen setup, you would, the item would be to your left. You would list it and photograph it without even moving at all. There would be zero steps. So if you could somehow do that in it, um, like ridiculous facilities like B&H Photo, in Manhattan, when you go there, the salespeople do not move. They help you when you buy something. You, they, it goes onto a conveyor belt to the front desk. Like everyone is super. No one moves anywhere. All the reduced steps. Um, I can't even imagine everything being fixed like that. Where every tool you need, every supply is all within arm's reach. And I was like looking at um, Toyota. They unload a semi truck in seven minutes. And um, and when the when the truck rolls after seven minutes another one rolls in and seven minutes later, that's empty. That's how fast things move. And I'm just like, that's amazing how people only do tiny areas of movement. But it, it is a little, um, I was going to ask you, Laura, if you have a, I need something to put my feet on because it's cold. So in the garage, I'm thinking of, yeah, I'm always in my coat. It's freezing. So I need to figure out how to, a warmer space in here in my house. It's fine. But in the garage, it's freezing. Have you thought about having a heater in there? I have a heater. Yeah. No, but my, but my feet still get cold. So I'm thinking like I had a, something to really warm my nice feet. Really nice slippers. Really nice slippers. I'm wearing my slippers. Okay, see, I need really nice slippers. So. <laughs> so you get through the hand warmers. That okay. New York, Chicago weather. <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't even think of that. I've got my next appointment, Chris. I've got to take off. I've really enjoyed this. I appreciate it. And thanks for everything. And hope to keep seeing everybody. See you, All Mike. Right. All right. Okay, thanks. Everybody else good? Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. See ya. Bye.